Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to tomorrow. This is a really exciting time for space flight right now. So much is happening. But probably what has me the most excited is the question of whether or not the debate is finally over regarding the Russian-made RD-180 engines. This is your space pod for June 15th, 2016. So yesterday, the United States Senate finally came to a compromise regarding the RD-180 engine used on the Atlas V rocket for national security payloads. And what they have agreed to is to allow United Launch Alliance to have access to up to 18 RD-180 engines up until 2022, when the Vulcan rocket is expected to be online. This way, they can continue to compete with SpaceX's Falcon rockets for all of these upcoming launch competitions. This is all part of the National Defense Authorization Act for 2017, and the House of Representatives already has a version of this bill that also allows United Launch Alliance to use up to 18 engines. However, their bill doesn't have a specific cutoff date like the Senate version does, but I'm sure that they can come to some sort of agreement and resolution on when the cutoff date would be, if there even is a cutoff date, so I'm sure that'll be resolved very soon. It seems that all the big political players who've been involved with this ongoing debate are happy with this compromise. John McCain is happy, Richard Shelby is happy, Bill Nelson is happy, and it's him that we have to thank for helping to reach this compromise. Of course, United Launch Alliance is very happy with this result, and probably even Elon Musk is happy that he still has a strong rival in the upcoming Air Force launch contract competitions. <sighs> It's almost enough to make me believe that there's some sort of political space god out there smiling on us today. It's not quite final yet, but this ongoing debate that's been going on for almost three years now is finally drawing to a close. Now one more thing that I wanted to talk about was that yesterday, on Tuesday, Orbital ATK's Cygnus spacecraft, designated OA-6 and named the Rick Husband, unberthed and separated from the International Space Station. But unlike previous Cygnus missions, where it immediately began re-entry maneuvers, this Cygnus still has a couple of jobs to do. Its first job was to conduct the Sapphire experiment, which was deliberately starting a fire and exposing materials that were used to build the International Space Station to that fire and see how they hold up. And they're going to take that knowledge and make improvements on future spacecraft and habitats. Our own Lisa Stojanovsky made a great space pod a while back about this experiment and explains it in greater detail. And you can watch that here if you haven't already. Apparently, the test was successful and that was conducted yesterday. And hopefully, we'll be getting the results of that experiment very soon. Who knows, maybe even Lisa will talk about those results. Now, before this Cygnus re-enters the atmosphere next week, it has one more job to do. It's going to be deploying five CubeSats for NASA called Lemur, which are part of a remote sensing satellite constellation that provide global ship tracking data and weather monitoring. Now, over this next week, the Cygnus is going to be performing a lot of in-flight tests on the Cygnus and some of its systems to see how it performs under different conditions in orbit. And that information is going to help Orbital ATK make future design enhancements on the Cygnus vehicle. Sounds to me like NASA and Orbital ATK are taking advantage of as many opportunities as they can with this mission. And I'm very hopeful that there will be a lot more multitask missions in the whole commercial cargo program. Now, I can't end this video without mentioning that Blue Origin is going to be doing a live webcast this Friday of their next launch of the new Shepard rocket. This is awesome! They listen to the space enthusiast community and probably pressure from their rivals as well, and they're going to be sharing their progress with us in real time. I'm so excited for this. I'm definitely going to be watching live, and I hope you will too. Man, so much is happening, but what do you think about all of this? Do you think that the debate around the RD-180 engine is finally over? Do you think that the three launch attempts this week will be successful? And what are your predictions about the Sapphire experiment and possible upgrades that Orbital ATK might make to their Cygnus vehicle? Let us know in the comments below or on any of our social media. I definitely want to know what you guys think about all this stuff that's happening. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and tell your friends about us, which helps us to grow so that we can spread even more awareness and excitement about space. We're all over the internet and invite you to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and of course our website, tomorrow.tv, where we have a chat room and you can join in the conversation with us and fellow space enthusiasts. Now, this is a crowdfunded show through Patreon, and I want to give a huge shout out and a big thank you to all of our founders of tomorrow. We have two of them now. Oh my god! 
gosh, that's awesome. Our founders are contributing $50 or more every month so that we can create this show. But I also want to thank our architects, engineers, ambassadors, and dreamers of tomorrow whose continued support allows us to continue making these space pots. Thank you so much to all of you. It just blows my mind, your guys' generosity. And I am eternally grateful to all of you that we are able to make this show and just ah, share this excitement and enthusiasm for space flight. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. My name is Michael Clark, and hopefully you know just a little bit more today than you did yesterday, thanks to tomorrow. Keep moving onwards and upwards, everybody, and I will see you in the future.